Good morning. You probably didn't know, but the American Heart Association has suggested that we set thermostats at 58 degrees to promote good heart health. So in the interest of your hearts, we are lowering the... No, I'm kidding. We're working on uh, getting the heat fixed again, yet still. So if you come back on Tuesday, it'll be nice and toasty. So, but hopefully everybody wore a coat to make it from the parking lot into here so you are ready for worship. Good for you. Now, who all is visiting? We have visitors right down here in front. You know how I knew? Because nobody said... No, I, tell us. I was warned. I was tipped off. So tell us... Oh, wait. Here comes the microphone. Oh, yes. Yes. It's a uh, uh, favorite color, state capital. Well, that's okay. You can have a designated speaker. There you go. Yes. In the choir. Yes. And my sister-in-law is actually in the choir as well. Yes. This is our youngest daughter and our grandson from hey. Indiana visiting this weekend. Northern has, Indiana, I hear. Way, yes. Which, and they okay. say it's not much colder than this, actually. All right. Well, well, we're glad you're here. Laryngitis and all. And Mrs. Welch in the back. Stand up. Oh, you are. <laughs> Oh, happy new year. I'm loud even though I'm short. <laughs> this is my friend Marley Clay. We were stationed together 32 years ago. She lives here in the Glade, and we are delighted to have her join us today. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Wait now. Right, wait. Put on your skates. Come down here in the front again. Wait. Hang on. The people at home can't hear you. This is my friend Shirley Bateman. She lives in Fairfield Glade. She attends the Presbyterian Church, but she's here checking our church out today, and she's a tennis player extraordinaire. Mm. <laughs> oh, and, and pickleball player, too, forgot. <laughs> We're glad you're here, even if you are a pickleball player. Anybody else visiting? Okay, so here's the deal. Uh, we have several memorial services. The first is for Doug McGinn next Saturday morning at 11. Then next Saturday afternoon at 4, we will inter Phil Tenney's ashes in the columbarium, and we will have a, a brief time of remembrance at the beginning of the Saturday night service. Phil didn't want to have a service so we're sort of skating on the edge of honoring <laughs> Phil's wishes and uh, giving the assembled folks an opportunity to share some Phil stories. So if you would like to share a Phil story, come to uh, Saturday Night Worship next week. Then the following Saturday is Walt Miller's uh, memorial service. That also is at 11 on January 28th. So... Mark those in your calendar. And one note on the service, we, you are asked, you may want to put a marker in your ELWs, 815, the choir anthem. You are invited to sing with verse, along with verse 3. So hopefully we will all come roaring in on verse 3 of the choir anthem. Any announcements from the assembly for the sake of good order? Anything of which we need to be made aware? If not, as you are able, I invite you please to stand for the thanksgiving. Oh no, that's confession and forgiveness, sorry. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who makes all things new, whose mercy endures forever. 
Trusting in God's mercy as community gathered here in this place, we confess our sin. Holy One, source of our renewal, we confess that we are wrapped up in sin and cannot free ourselves. We have not practiced your righteousness. Our hearts have turned away from you. For the sake of the world you so love, forgive us that we may be reconciled to one another for the glory of your holy name. Thus says our God, the former things have come to pass and new things, I now declare. God's mercy makes us new. We are forgiven in the name of Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Your light has come, the spirits call obey. Show the glory of your God which shines on you today.
Let us pray. Holy God, our strength and our Redeemer, by your Spirit, hold us forever. That through your grace we may worship you and faithfully serve you, follow you, and joyfully find you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Isaiah. 
Listen to me, O coastlands. Pay attention, you peoples from far away. The Lord called me before I was born. While I was in my mother's womb, he named me. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He, hid, he made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he, did, he hid me away. And he said to me, you are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my cause is with the Lord and my reward <coughs> with my God. And now the Lord says, who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the sight of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. He says, it is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to one deeply despised, abhorred by the nations, the slave of rulers. Kings shall see and stand up, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord who is faithful. The Holy One of Israel has chosen you. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> I waited patiently upon the Lord who stooped to me and heard my cry. The Lord lifted me out of the desolate pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a high cliff, making my footing sure. The Lord put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many shall see and stand in awe and put their trust in the Lord. Be are they who trust in the Lord. They do not turn to enemies or to those who follow lies. Great are the wonders you have done, O Lord my God. In your plans for us none can be compared with you. Oh, that I could make them known and tell them, but they are more than I can count. Sacrifice and offering you do not desire. You have opened my ears, burnt offering and sin offering you have not required. And so I said, here I am, I come. In the scroll of the book it is written of me. I long to do your will, O oh my God. Your law is deep within me. I proclaimed righteousness in the great assembly. I have not restrained my lips, O oh Lord, you know. I have not hid your righteousness in my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your deliverance. I have not concealed your steadfast love and truth from the great assembly. You are the Lord. Do not withhold your compassion from me. May your steadfast love and your truth continually keep me safe. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Paul, called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and our brother Sosthenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, together with all those who in every place call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours, grace to you and peace from our God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given to you in Christ Jesus. 
For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to St. John, the first chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. John the Baptist saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. The next day... John again was standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? And he said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who had heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas which is translated Peter. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Well, last week you had the pleasure of hearing Pastor Jensen preach on the baptism of our Lord. This week, alas, I am back. So, the good times are done. But you do get baptism part two. Because we get to take another run at this baptism deal. This is John's account of the baptism. And it is presented in a slightly different way. Subtle differences in detail and purpose. But isn't that the wonder of scripture? Same event recorded by different people with different details and different emphases. I am tickled to have the opportunity to explore baptism part two since Amy and I are fresh off the baptism of Abigail Beatrice, grandchild number three. And how like my baptism and yours, I imagine, or countless others before or since, in the midst of all of the chaos, God is present and active to accomplish that which God purposes. In the midst of the confusion and the stuff of life, God is present and active to accomplish that which God purposes. Because at the end of the day, even for all of our vaunted Lutheran love of good order, it's not about our efforts nor our performance. It's about the presence of activity of God in the midst of all of that messy 
Ness. And what a grand metaphor for baptism that is. Take, for instance, young Abigail. Careful and meticulous planning led up to the blessed event. No less than three clergy people, two elders, one secretary, two parents, all looking, plotting, and planning. And still, there was a misspelling in the bulletin. And the baptism happened anyway. Such is life. Even with the error, God was present and active to accomplish that for which he purposed. And the sister and the cousin, so excited to see each other. One lives in Conyers, Georgia, and the other lives in Chattanooga. They don't get to see each other that often. So this was a grand opportunity. Before, after, and during the baptism. Woo! We're not a quiet family to begin with. And we're really not quiet at the age of four. These two children discovered that it was great fun to leap from the top step of the chancel down to the nave level. Over and over and over again. Accompanied by great whooping and laughing. I was torn. What to do? What to do? Corral the children? Or stick with the baptismal program? I was a guest in this congregation. So I started kind of sidling over toward the children. You ever tried baptizing cats? It's, a, <laughs> it's about that effective. I, there was no way I'd grab one and the other would be gone. I'd get that one and the first one would be gone. I said, this just didn't going to work. So I left them alone and stuck with the baptismal program and the organist God bless the organist. She came out from behind the organ and just sort of had a little chat. I don't know what she whispered to those children, but it was far more effective than anything I was trying to accomplish. But in the midst of all of that stuff, God was present and active to accomplish what God purposes. And two four-year-olds had a really good time in the process right up until they bumped heads at the conclusion of the baptism following a high-speed collision. That collision elicited great weeping and wailing, but by then most everybody was gone. The baptizee had eaten and was sleeping. The family was packed up and headed out, and another little child had been ushered into God's family, even... With all of that chaos, in the midst of all of that chaos, or perhaps because of all of that chaos, God remains present and active to accomplish what God purposes. Don't take my word for it. You can follow the gospel directive. Come and see, because that's really why that phrase is there. Come and see. The people of Rivermont Presbyterian Church who have embraced Justin and Julia and Anna and Abigail without question, without qualification, without caveat. Come and see. This one's still hard for me to wrap my brain around. A pastor who used ontological in a children's sermon. Who, baby, you got to work to pull that one off. And he did. Ontological, if you were not a philosophy undergraduate, is the ground of being, the nature of being, right? And he used that ginormous word to explain to those little kids that God speaks creation into existence. And you could have heard a pin drop. If you don't want to travel all the way to Chattanooga, come and see a community right here in Metro Crossville. Didn't you like that? Metro Crossville. A community gathered to show appreciation to law enforcement officers. right? Just to say thank you for what you do. Come and see a cross traced on the forehead of a newly baptized Christian. Come and see that cross follow that baptizee throughout all of the stages of life. Come and see a cross made of burnt 
palms traced once a year on that same cross at Ash Wednesday, which is coming up soon. Mark your calendars for February 22nd. Come and see when the cross is made one last time over caskets or ashes. Because when we gather, we remember that cross which has followed from font to niche, from cradle to grave, that cross that follows us throughout life, sometimes leading, sometimes supporting, but always covering, reminding us that we have been sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. In that sealing and marking, in that baptismal covenant, we are empowered to let our light so shine that people look at you and say, boy, you did a great job. No. No, that's not what it says. Let your light so shine so that people glorify your Father in heaven, right? Because that's where the glory goes. Come and see a community gathered in those baptismal waters who then spend a lifetime saying thanks be to God. Come and see is what Jesus told those curious disciples who are trailing along behind him. Come and see. Where are you staying? What are you doing? What's this Lamb of God business? How do we be community? What are we supposed to do? And the answer was not a theological discourse, not a Facebook post, just a simple phrase, come and see. Come and see Jesus at work, at play, at worship, at ministry. Come and see the community as it gathers. A community called and spoken into being. Come and see a community created in the waters of baptism, blessed with holy oil. A community gathered in and then sent out. Sent out to be community for others, with others, to others. Come and see. Come and taste. Come and touch. Come and receive the Lamb of God at this table. Come and encounter the lamb at the font. Come and give thanks as we gather at the columbarium and recall the word of God and the words of God. Come and see. I was amazed last Sunday when our family, our new family to the south, stood to recite the creed. Fifty some odd years melted away because they used words like fence and wince and Jesus coming to judge whom? The quick and the dead. Yeah, I was just transported back through 50 something years to another place and another time where another group recited those words and those people were community for me before I had any clue what that meant. People like Bernard and Dorothy Trexler, Bob and Ann Kuhn, Alma Barkshard, who was my first grade Sunday school teacher, Aaron and Myrna Gross, who carried me to that font. People who were community gathered to love and embrace me and then send me on my way so that I could be here. And you and I could be community together. So how is it that we're going to be community this day in this place? How is it we extend the invitation to others the same way, the same way that Jesus did? Come and see. Come and see, come and taste, come and experience, come and be part of the wonder of community and the gift of baptism. Amen.
whole church, we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Called together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Put a new song in the mouth of your church. Inspire the baptized to tell of your faithfulness. Sharing the good news of your salvation throughout the earth. Bless the witness of missionaries, especially David Brondos and his wife. Merciful God. The waters of baptism call us into life in the spirit. Preserve the world's waters. Protect them from pollution. Support plants and animals who depend on them. Bring rain in places of drought. Guide us in protecting local waterways like the Obed River, and in responding to devastating floods. Merciful God, receive Jesus, you are the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Show your mercy to all nations. Direct leaders to do your will. Fill governing bodies with righteousness. Equip judges with discernment and compassion. Merciful God, Incline your ear to all who cry to you. Especially we lift up the people of Ukraine and Afghanistan. Draw near to individuals and communities suffering violence, injustice, illness, or poverty. Hide them in the shadow of your hand. and Make us signs of your faithfulness to all in need. We continue to pray for Betty A. Betty A. Don B. Sherry B, Sherry B. Ruby, C. Ruby C, David F, David F. Bill, H. Bill H, Lowell K, Lowell K. Pastor, Joe. Pastor Joe, Vicky S, Vicky S. Kathy, w. Kathy W, Larry W. Larry w. Merciful God, we, we pray for this nation, our President Joseph Biden, Tennessee's Governor Bill Lee, Cumberland County Mayor Alan Foster, and all who serve and protect us. Merciful God, in every place and time you have sanctified your people. We praise you for the testimony of those who have died in the faith. We remember especially Doug, Walt, Phil, Gail. Strengthen us. As we wait for the day of our Lord Jesus Christ, merciful God. Brothers and sisters, I invite you to lift silently now before God's throne of grace those concerns, cares, and celebrations which you carry in your lives this day. We bring to you our needs our hopes, our prayers, O oh God. Prayers offered aloud, prayers uttered silently, prayers for which we have no words, all trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified and risen. Amen. If you are able, I invite you please to stand. The peace of the risen Christ is with you always. I invite you to share that peace with one another.
God, you break the bonds of injustice and let the oppressed go free. Receive these offerings in thanksgiving for all your works of merciful power. Shape us as people of your justice and freedom. You we magnify and adore through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord is with you. And also with you, lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new, 
in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the the beginning, the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophets, hopes, and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son, Jesus, the Word made flesh. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. Broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As community gathered together here, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth and his death and resurrection. We look with hope. For his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate. Power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray together the prayer which our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come and taste the joy of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. If you are communing in your pews, I would remind you that the words you hear spoken at this altar are spoken also for you. The body of Christ is given for you. The blood of Christ is shed for you. 
Our communion table is open. You are invited to come forward at the direction of the ushers and join this community as Christ encounters us here.
Please stand. Let us pray. Holy One, we thank you for the healing that springs forth abundantly from this meal. Renew our strength to do justice, love kindness, and journey humbly with you. Amen. God, who faithfully brings forth justice and breaks the oppressor's rod, bless, strengthen, and uphold you now and forever. Amen. Amen. People of Christ Lutheran Church, who are we? Christ Lutheran Church is a caring community of the baptized people of God, saved by the gift of grace, empowered by the Holy Spirit, and sent into the world to share the good news of God's love. Go in peace. Follow the way of Jesus. Good morning.
Thank you. Good to be back. Good morning. There you go. Good to see you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you, sir? I'm all right. Look at you. Good morning. How are you doing? Fine. Hope you are. Well, so far. Good morning. Good to see you. I'm well. Good morning. Good morning. 